I have, uh, probably announce this again at the end as well if we get some more people to show up. Um, um, I don't have the midterm tests back. I'm working on those right now. My plan is probably on Thursday we'll go over that. So um, hopefully sometime tomorrow I'll get those back or at least get example solutions so people can start looking at that as well. From the ones I looked at preliminarily, um, they were looking pretty good. So uh, we'll see. But um, and the other thing, I meant to do this before, but I've been kind of snowed under, got behind on some stuff. Um, one thing that I did want to make certain that uh, for the people that uh, are here uh, today is um, um, uh, I, I am going to ask people to do kind of one more more open-ended assignment. I've talked about this a little bit before, so I'll, uh, a reminder on that. I would, I would like to, there, there's a um, GitHub classroom now, like our uh, first three assignments. I would like everybody to accept this by the end of this week. Uh, and not only accept this, but um, go ahead and um, let me go ahead and accept it here. But go ahead and um, modify um, and make a commit uh, where you describe the data set that you're working on. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping to do this ask people to do this by Friday we can maybe give a little bit of time so if you haven't thought about you know if you haven't looked at the um, um, the resources that I gave here or if you don't have a data set in mind try and do that this week here um, and pick something so I'm not looking for you know really overly big or complicated kind of thing on this final project but I am just looking for you to pick some data set, um, do some exploration, uh, some feature analysis on it, um, and then fit a regression or a classification model to it. Uh, use some different models and see how well you can do in terms of, you know, either, uh, you know, either getting good uh, precision recall if you're doing regression or, or um, uh, confusion matrix or getting a good um, um, Accuracy if you're doing a regression problem, something like that. So, um, um, and I'll continue talking about this in the class. See if people have questions on it, but I did want people to get started thinking about this and uh, uh, choose a data set uh, and start uh, at least uh, getting things on there. So I'm going to ask people to use uh, a GitHub Classroom. So use a, a GitHub repository. Uh, so maybe another thing is uh, try and read about like uh, typical layout for data science or machine learning projects like that and follow thing. Although for these open-ended assignments, I'm mostly expecting, I hope people will have more than one notebook, but I'm expecting people to mostly just uh, create a couple of IPython notebooks, like, like maybe one notebook where you do some data exploration, Maybe another where you do some um, feature engineering or uh, do some things with features, and then maybe one or a couple where you uh, try and fit some models uh, to your data set and do some things. So that's kind of a, as a, at a minimum, I'm hoping people will have at least a couple of lecture notebooks, um, have the data set uh, in, in your data subdirectory, um, um, maybe some other stuff. So. If you get into this, like for example, once you have more than one notebook, if you have common things that you're doing, like like um, if you need to do something to make certain the data is correctly downloaded in your data subdirectory, or if, if you have a common way of, 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 um, of uh, cleaning your data that you want to reuse in a couple of notebooks, you might want to pull some code out and make a module of it, put it in your source subdirectory, <coughs> get your Python path set up, that kind of stuff. So, um, but I'll try and give more details on that, but I wanted to get people thinking about that. I, I meant to do that like last week while we were getting started with the test, but I didn't quite get to it. So, uh, But that is up there now, so um, let me know. And I'm going to be trying to look that people um, do something this week, hopefully by Friday, at least accept the assignment. If not, uh, write a little bit about um, 
which data set that you want to use and uh, what you're thinking about doing with it. So you don't have you don't have to 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 to, to be correct or know exactly what you want to do, but just some ideas on what you might try to do with your data set. So. And hopefully by sometime uh, next week, I'm going to be checking over those. Um, and, uh, and if anybody, if, if I've got multiple people trying to select the same data set, I'll probably, you know, uh, make, uh, give it to the first person that, that made a commit uh, where you specified what your data set was and ask, uh, any uh, subsequent ones to pick something else so that everybody's doing using a different data set at least. Um, I am, so let me have, if, if you guys uh, want to ask anything about that, let me know. So. Um, okay, so yeah, we're just keep that in mind work on that this week we don't have an assignment this week um, we will have at least three more um, kind of uh, uh, the assignments uh, basic assignments um, uh, like the first three that we've done so the next one is going to be over support vector machines just looking ahead a bit um, um, this week is kind of uh, I, I oh, another announcement I did just uh, add in some additional uh, notebooks so I didn't have any notebooks past uh, logistic regression so there is stuff in there now um, I'm going to talk today maybe a little bit about K nearest neighbors I might not take up the rest of the time today here but I'll talk about it. this week's a little bit of a, um, a little bit of some miscellaneous stuff um, so I don't really have an assignment where I ask you to explicitly do some stuff with either K and N or naive Bayes but you might find it useful um, or you might uh, find it useful on like your own final project. So K nearest neighbors is a good basic model. It doesn't it doesn't work well usually for large data sets, but um, it gives a good baseline. Uh, and if it does work well, it probably tells you a little bit of something about the data set you, that you have. So it's a good first thing to try often uh, if you need to make a regression model. Um, um, or, or uh, actually, it's better for classification. You can use it both for regression and classification. So we'll look at that here for a little bit today. Uh, but looking forward, um, I haven't posted the assignment four yet. I'll get that. I'll try to get that before the end of the week. Uh, it'll be over support vector machines. So we'll, we'll next week we'll we'll get into support vector machines, which um, are work in similar ways to like the logistic and. Uh, um, linear regression that we talked about in terms of how the models fit and things. So it's really kind of like linear regression plus some extra uh, uh, some some extra uh, uh, things on the uh, the fitness function that you do. So. Um, all right, but yeah, I, yeah, I am planning on doing an assignment on support vector machines, an assignment on ensemble learning. Um, and then one assignment on unsupervised learning, um, so specifically um, dimensionality reduction and some other things that we'll talk about for the last two or three uh, units, last two or three weeks of this class here. Um, all right, well, still haven't had anybody else show up, so, um, but uh, let me know on the assignment. If anybody wants to ask some questions on those. So. Um, all right, so um, I thought today I would spend a little bit of time talking about K nearest neighbors. Um, so we'll, or, or finally, you know, after our midterm test here, uh, we're going to start looking at other uh, machine learning. Uh, methods, mechanisms, right? So linear logistic regression, I kind of think of as, you know, uh, uh, the, the starting point there, the basis of, so a lot of machine learning concepts um, and algorithms work in similar ways, um, but, uh, but for the next couple of units, we'll look at some other uh, different kinds of algorithms, different uh, machine learning mechanisms. So um, let's start with k and N. Um, our textbook actually doesn't have a, uh, a chapter on K&N, although it, it 
uses it in a couple of different places. So, so, you, so you see some examples of using KNN, but it doesn't have a specific uh, chapter for it. So, um, so yeah, there's, again, I had a couple of links here. Hopefully these are all working. I haven't had a chance to check all these. Um, uh, but there's a, most of the materials in here come from these three uh, online um, tutorials they have. Look like they're all still working. That's good. So. Um, okay, so the reason why uh, I do like to usually cover KNN uh, at least a little bit in our machine learning class is um, <coughs> um, it really is one of the simplest <coughs> machine learning algorithms. In fact, uh, a lot of courses actually start with KNN. Uh, it, 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 it's, it, the, the way you build a KNN model is quite a bit different from what we've done so far. Um, but um, so, so let, let's look at what it is. So the intuition um, behind KNN, um, again, this came from one of those uh, links that I had up above here, um, is um, Let's just start by thinking of, of two features, right? So we can visualize what's happening here. So we might have two features, and let's say we're doing a typical classification task, right? So the, the color coding is meant to indicate that, you know, these are the, let's say the, the red or the yes. Uh, so we're doing a binary classification. So the red are the positive case and the blue are the negative case um, uh, here, right? And we've got 10 point, we've got 10 samples in this data set with two separate features here. So, um, KNN uh, really, so you don't actually train or fit a model. It, it's non parametric, um, I believe is the technical term here. So, uh, in fact, KNN is so simple that uh, it's an easy thing uh, uh, to actually implement by hand, especially if you're using like a high level language like Python, right? So, so, um, uh, the easiest thing is, is something like this. So to implement KNN, uh, you don't have to actually fit a model. All you have to do, the only parameter you need is K, is the number of neighbors that you want to find. Right? So to implement KNN, all you have to do is, uh, if I have a new point that I want to classify, whether it's yes or no, um, so that's what the X is supposed to be here, um, I need to be able to measure the distance between that new point that I want to classify and all the other points I have here, right? So the easiest, uh, you should know how to measure the, dis the Euclidean distance. Uh, so you should run across that concept, right? So I can, I can figure out, you know, the, the distance using uh, the square root of, 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 you know, the, the, the difference between x and the difference between y, square that, get the square root, get the Euclidean dif difference, right? You can use other distance measures, but um, uh, most people should be familiar with Euclidean distance, right? But visually, you can see <coughs> that these are the three closest points. So uh, if I calculate the distance, uh, this probably has the, the smallest distance between those two points, followed by probably that one, and then uh, uh, that one is the third biggest, right? So if I want to do K and N, I just basically have to calculate, uh, you know, I don't fit a model beforehand. Um, I just have a new point I want to classify, uh, and I would calculate the distance between that point and every other sample in my data set. Then I would sort them from the closest to the furthest away, uh, and then based on the parameter K that you want to use, um, so, so if K is 3, I'm just going to concentrate on the three closest points. Um, for for a, a, the, the, a three nearest neighbors uh, classification here. Right? So uh, in terms of if, if I want to make a prediction, a classification prediction, um, uh, using K is three, I would just count up. So I'd use like a majority vote, right? So in this case, I said the red was the positive case. Um, Anyway, I had two red ones and one blue, so my prediction for the classifier would be that this should be uh, uh, classified as red or positive here, since two of the three closest neighbors 
uh, were the red class. Right? So, um, to add a little bit of complexity, so you know, that's simple enough, simple enough that you could easily implement that yourself, uh, especially using Python, right? So if all your samples were just uh, um, uh, rows in like a matrix and I have columns, you know, so I have feature one and feature two, um, you could pretty easily calculate the distance between some new sample point and all the samples that you have and then sort those and then take the top uh, three or however many K that you want. And then once you have those, you have to figure out what class they are uh, and do something to figure out what your predicted class is going to be. Right? So the, the simplest is, is simple majority vote. Of course, um, that can lead to problems. So like if I use an even number for K, K is four, um, and if my four closest points had to be like these two and these two, then I have a tie on the vote. Right? So you have to do something about that. So, so a simple majority, uh, you could possibly end up with a tie. So how would you break that? So uh, one common thing to do is use a weighted um, vote. So you would, you would multiply or take into account, uh, so you'd give more weight to the, the, the closer points than the further points. Um, so there's different ways you could do a weighting like that, um, uh, but but that's a, I think the default uh, K and N K nearest neighbors predictor from Scikit Learn uses a weighted um, a vote if you're doing a classification like this by by default. So. Um, Okay, so uh, to summarize that just a little bit, uh, a couple things about that. So for one, you know, it, it's uh, th this is quite different from uh, logistic regression. If we're doing classification using logistic regression, so in fact we don't have to find out a set of parameters. That's what non -par non parametric means here. So we don't have to fit like a set of parameters like we'd have to do for a logistic regression. Um, so really, uh, there, there's, there's zero cost. Uh, remember, scikit-learn, everything is like a, a fit transformer. So you do first do the fit in order to find the parameters if your model is parameterized. Um, and then you do a transform or um, a predict um, once you fit the model. So there's nothing to be done uh, to fit a K and N. Uh, whenever, just when you do, but all the work happens on the predict side. So, you know, anytime, so if I have a different point I want to predict, all the distances have to be recalculated. You can't, you can't calculate anything up front for your predict method. You just have to take your new point, uh, calculate the distance between it and all the, the points that are in my uh, data set that I'm uh, uh, using for my K-neighbor model, uh, and then find the closest N, closest K, whatever K you're using. Um, uh, to do your prediction on, right? Um, and later we'll, we'll talk about uh, you can you can use KNN for regression as well. Um, um, I guess you know. Um, um, for example, you know, just if, if you think of these as house prices, right? So in that case, we only have one feature, and this was the price of the house. So again, you could do. Uh, regression by taking the nearest neighbors and like, like say taking the average of the three nearest neighbors for the the regression value you try and predict. So that's an easy thing uh, you could do uh, to do uh, regression with k nearest neighbors here. Um, all right. So yeah. So this is often used in some machine learning classes. Uh, people like to start with this. Uh, it's uh, because it's, it's it's very easy to implement. Uh, so most people can implement it um, uh, in just you know a couple five or six lines of code. Uh, implement a, a working basic version of K nearest neighbors. Um, so it's lazy learning. Um, so there's no cost uh, uh, to fit a set of parameters like for linear regression or support vector machines or 
some of the other stuff that we'll look at uh, starting next week. Um, so um, we haven't talked about this before, but um, um, for like linear and logistic regression, if you do add new points uh, that you want to train with, you'd have to refit the model, right? So, so if you got new data comes in, you want to improve the performance of your model um, uh, for a parametric model like linear regression, you'd have to train a whole new, uh, you know, fit a whole new set of parameters for it. So um, for K and M, since, since you're not fitting anything, uh, you just add new data, it could be added with, with no problem. And be used uh, to uh, improve your performance. Um, um, so yeah, if if, if you're trying to um, uh, the fit uh, a k nearest neighbors, there's really kind of two meta parameters, right? So uh, you know, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about regularization the last couple of units, uh, where we had alpha. Uh, there's a couple of other parameters that you ran across. Um, uh, for K and N, of course, uh, different values of K might give better or worse performance, more or less, more or fewer neighbors. Uh, the only other parameter is really the, the, um, the, the distance function that you use, right? So, uh, and in fact, uh, once you have high dimensional data, Euclidean, uh, things get weird. When, when you have large numbers of dimensions, so large number of features, it's kind of very non-intuitive if you've never studied this, uh, but Euclidean distance tends to wor be worse and worse the higher the dimensionality of the data that you're using. So, um, so yeah, it's more common to use something else. Um, I, I don't know if I've talked, it, 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 some of those links I gave probably talk about some of these others like Manhattan distance or other distances. Uh, but there are other ways of measuring closeness or, or distance besides Euclidean distance that you could use. So. Um, but yeah, it's it's K N isn't considered um, it, it's not considered a top performer. So uh, it'll usually usually wouldn't work very well for a high dimensional data set. So big data sets um, um, tend not to be great with K N. Um, so, and yeah, so there, there's no cost in, in fitting the data, but uh, every time you need to do a prediction, uh, you have to calculate the distances between the, the point you want to predict and everything else. So uh, uh, that can often be actually higher than, uh, you know, that can, that can take a lot of work uh, sometimes, depending on how much data you have. So, so usually for like linear regression, um, um, uh, it's, it's much quicker to do the prediction. So once you have the model fit, uh, you can uh, straightforwardly, uh, without a lot of overhead, make new predictions uh, on that data. Uh, but it's, so it's kind of reversed uh, for K and N here. So, um, So uh, yeah, if, if you want to do this with a um, more than like a binary classification, um, you have to do um, some different things. So you have to do like a one versus many or that kind of stuff. So it doesn't naturally work well with uh, multi-class kinds of uh, classification. Problem. So, so that said, though, it's often kind of a good baseline, right? So maybe one of the first things to try is just a simple K and N, uh, and whatever performance it gives, usually uh, that's kind of a, a good lower bound. So um, 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 you should often be able to find something that'll work better, but at least K and N will tell you uh, what a minimum kind of acceptable performance is that you might get. Um, oh yeah, so I'd kind of forgotten, uh, but but um, 
But yeah, if you read this notebook that I posted for KNN, uh, there's actually a bit of a walkthrough of uh, actually implementing it by hand, right? So um, uh, just a few comments on that here. Uh, so here we're using the Iris data set that we've run across before. So remember, this is a multi-class uh, data set. Uh, there, there's, there's three um, uh, different types of um, um, iris flowers uh, in the data set here that we're trying to cl uh, classify using four separate features. Um, so, um, Canon can be sensitive to the scale of the feature. So this is one of those that's usually a good idea to do um, some sort of feature scaling uh, before you use it. Uh, that's because, you know, um, like back to this example, um, you know, if this, the, if the scale of my first feature is 0 to 100, but this one, let's say it only went from 0 to 1, the, the, you'll, you'll get a lot of distance, so, so you know, the, the absolute amount of distance for the X one will be much bigger than for the Y one. That tends to uh, skew the results, right? So, so, so it's, it's much, KNN works much better if all of the features have the same kind of scale, so that, you know, you don't have one where the, um, the difference on the distance for one feature uh, ends up being a much bigger or smaller uh, in the computing of the overall distance between a point you're trying to classify and um, the points that you're using. So, um, so yeah, in this example, what we uh, we're just walking through doing kind of the standard sorts of things. So we, we split it up into test and train data uh, using a thirty percent. Uh, uh, split uh, test out uh, uh, um, use 20 or 30 percent that we keep back for testing um, and we uh, show an example of doing a, a standard scalar um, um, on the data here um, Oh, um, yeah, I was thinking, uh, 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 yeah, we don't actually walk through kind of doing the code by hand here. Um, some of those links I gave you might give some examples of, of just building it by hand in Python. But um, you should be familiar with the, the pattern for scikit-learn. So uh, if you want to do a Caden Neighbors Neighbors, there's a Caden Neighbors Classifier. So that gives you the basic one to do classification using KNN. Um, it has the metaparameter in neighbors. Uh, you can also specify the distance here. So, um, I guess I have to rerun this notebook here. Um, so yeah, I got the, the default uh, distance is the Minkowski distance, so um, which I believe is is the Manhattan um, uh, same thing. So yeah, if you bring up the documentation or look it up online, see a little bit about um, uh, the different um, metrics you can use for uh, distance here. So, um, so anyway. Um, So, well, like usual, if you're going to evaluate this, um, so we're, we're, I'm, we're kind of hiding the details, so I don't know exactly what it does here, but this is a multi-class classification, so, um, and we didn't do anything to change it into a binary uh, in this example that we're working through here. So, um, 
Um, if you fit a, a KNN, um, and you have to do predict, it'll give you what you expect, zero, one, or two, since we've got three classes here. Um, so here we're predicting on the the test data that we held back here. Right? So um, yeah, the rest of this is you know uh, kind of straightforward. So this this would apply to any kind of classifier that you were building. So uh, here, you know, we might want to tune the parameters like the, the size of K um, or the distance or some of those other uh, meta parameters that are possible. Um, so what we, we built uh, where we used a K of five here, so the five nearest neighbors um, um, that we are um, when, whenever we're doing predictions here. Um, so we can do this standard thing since this is a um, multi-class classification, uh, get like a confusion matrix. So you can see that, that uh, the confusion matrix on our uh, test data, um, it does pretty well. It's only missing uh, two of them uh, in total here. So, um, So since K is probably the most important the number of neighbors that you use, the most obvious thing to do uh, if you are trying to improve the performance of K and N would be to try different values of, of K for your neighbors, right? So that, that's all we're doing um, on the example start at this point. Uh, so try different Ks from 1 up to 40, uh, fit, fit a, a K and N, a K neighbors classifier with that. Um, Um, and here we're just calculating the error as the accuracy. So we're just pulling up um, the, the average number of mispredictions that were made um, um, on uh, each one of these here. Um, so in this case, what you want to try to minimize that error. Um, so, so what we are plotting this on. Um, um, our test data, right? So data that isn't part of, of what we use to create the K neighbors classifier here. So we get we get the best range in, in um, around six to uh, what six to fourteen uh, minimizes the error in this case for this iris data set, right? So, um, oh shoot. Uh, she may be missing something here. Um, so this is a uh, basic classification here. Um, hmm, this wasn't the notebook I was thinking. Sorry about that. Uh, give me one real quick second here. Let me see if I can find the other one. I'll have to find it. Yeah, so um, not certain way with that. So uh, just to um, 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 one other thing is that uh, you can ask uh, the the K neighbors classifier uh, to do this kind of stuff for you. Uh, so. Let's If I can remember what it, what the setting is for that, so um,
shoot. Uh, yeah, you don't remember exactly. So, so if I'm remembering uh, right, uh, there's a way, that the, the kind of thing that we just did right here, uh, that you can actually ask it to do that uh, for you, um, and it will um, automatically go through different ranges of K and uh, uh, pick the best one for you. So I'm kind of not remembering. Um, um, what the way is to do that. Uh, let me see. Let me look at one more thing here real quick. I'm sure that, that uh, they give some of that in some of these links that I had here. Okay, well, um, yeah, I'll just forget about that. I'll just see if I can find that other notebook. So, uh, and, and the other thing that this missing here is, yeah, there is a also um, a, a K neighbors regressor regression. So, so you can um, use scikit-learn to uh, do a regression problem. Um, K neighbors regressor, I guess. So, but it, it works kind of as you would expect, um, and uh, mostly the same. Uh, but it will whatever the nearest neighbors are. It will by default it will take um, the by the the, the weighting here. Um, Where I think if you do the, the, the default is just to use uniform, so it probably just takes the average of the uh, the uh, whatever neighbors are that you're using for the prediction. So, um, <clears throat> okay. Anyway, yep. Yeah, sorry about that. That that's kind of uh, all I wanted to cover on K. Actually, there's more, but uh, I have to find that out of the notebook, and I'll I'll post that up there. So. Um, let me just uh, we'll wrap up a little bit early, but let me let me go back and, and uh, 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 just to remind us again for the people that came in after I was talking about it. So there's an announcement um, about the uh, uh, the the will be kind of the seventh assignment. Um, so there's a more open ended assignment. Um, um, I'm planning on having three more kind of regular assignments. Uh, but I did, did want people to get started on the, the what I'll just call the uh, final assignment for the class. So there's more information on the announcement here. But for one thing, uh, by this week, and, and spread the word if you know some other people. Uh, I mean, I'll post this video as usual as well. Um, but uh, spread the word. Make, make, uh, I want everybody to go ahead and accept the uh, GitHub Classroom assignment uh, and get started on this um, by the end of this week. Um, and um, also to um, um, once you accept it, it's the you should be used to the the, the repository structure uh, but do also hopefully I can get everybody to do this by the end of this week as well so not only accept the assignment but choose a data set um, and the way that I want you to communicate back to me, which data set you're going to use is to go ahead and modify the README and add um, like a few sentences, a paragraph here of which data set you're going to use um, and some plans on what you hope to do with it. So, you know, you want to do a regression and I see these features, I want to use these features, um, that kind of stuff maybe. So just a couple things on that. So. <coughs> Um, there's a couple of links to three different uh, repositories of data sets that you can consider. Um, and uh, yeah, as a final thing that, that I already mentioned, uh, it will be kind of first come, first serve. So starting sometime next week, 
Um, I'm going to look through the um, uh, what people were saying they were going to use, uh, and, and if anybody is asking to use the same data set from UCI or whatever, um, I'll ask whoever came second or later to pick something else. So, um, so for you guys that are here, you know, if you have something in mind, might be a good idea to go ahead and get that done so that you can lock in which data set you're interested in, in uh, using um, to work on for the final project. So. Um, all right, yeah, so I mean, I still have quite a bit of time, but uh, I didn't really want to get into anything else, so um, I'll leave it there for today, so let me know if you have questions on the um, assignment or anything else. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably go, we'll, we'll go over the midterm test on Thursday and talk also about Bayes. I might also continue to talk a little bit about K&N, because I did want to, if I can find the rest of that material that I seem to be missing.